In this episode, I'm starting an online course from scratch after purchasing an $800 course from these guys making six to seven figures. We'll go step by step super fast from finding our journey, breaking down the steps, setting up our platform, scripting lessons like a pro, filming lessons like a pro, editing lessons like a pro, and finally selling our course. For those who are new, my name is Sergio Leis and I'm sharing stories on my solopreneur journey. This is week six and I have $2,000 left in savings. Every Sunday, I share what's working for me and what's not. You can subscribe or join in my newsletter down below if you want to be part of the journey. All right, let's get into it. If we want to teach something, we have to prove we're qualified to teach it. And I don't care about certificates or titles. I believe our value should be determined by the market. If people are willing to pay for your yoga course, then that's the ultimate validation that you're bringing value. Every online course is a transformation process. If you've seen my other videos, which I strongly recommend, I like to think of this like helping students go from island A to island B. Your online course is the medium to help them go from island A to island B. You must have experience in this journey, but you don't have to be an absolute expert. There's different levels of expertise. You can teach people from beginner to intermediate or from intermediate to expert. I'm helping people start online businesses from scratch, like starting online courses. And honestly, I knew nothing about this three years ago, but I've done my homework, gone through my journey, and now I feel confident to help people go from beginner to intermediate. So give a thought to what is your journey and where can you bring value to other people? All right, so we know our journey. Now we have to break the steps down. These steps will be the lessons of our course, and we can also group them into modules for a better experience. I use Notion to outline every module and lesson, and I put focus on one lesson at a time to make sure we bring the best value to our students. I like to name my lessons with a verb at the beginning, finding, creating, designing, because this conveys action, and we don't want just to share knowledge. We want our students to take action. Otherwise, they'll stay in Island A forever, even though they know how to get to Island B. Okay, so my platform is custom built with no code, but I don't recommend this unless you want to build something bigger than online courses. I recommend using Kajabi or Teachable. To be honest, all the pros use Kajabi. I've taken quite a few courses and it's always the same platform. These platforms are great because you just focus on building a great course and they take care of the rest. Kajabi is more expensive, but charges no transaction fee. Teachable is more affordable, but charges quite a big transaction fee. Anyway, with Kajabi, you still have to use Stripe for payments and they're going to charge you around 2% transaction fee fee for each sale. So play around with both and see which one suits you best. I go for Kajabi just because everyone's using this one and I can later change my mind if it doesn't work for me. So inside Kajabi, you can create a landing page for your course with very simple components, just like building a normal website. So you create your online course, they call it products, and then just populate this course with the specific modules and lessons. These platforms are also great because they have native integrations with Meta, Google, and so on for your marketing strategy. At this point, our platform is ready and we now have to create our course. For scripting, I like to think of this as building our storytelling. In communication, everything is a story. Your journey from island A to island B is a high level story. Your lessons as well are stories to get to the next step. So I jump into Notion and just dump my brain for that specific lesson using bullet points, but with no specific order at this point. I just get everything out. Along the way, I start finding a common thread to pull my story. And on a second read, I start organizing these ideas. You should be able to read other titles at a high level and understand what the story is about. Out. That's a good storytelling. Then you start filling in the content for every title. This is how I was taught storytelling for six years in corporate presentations. It worked great for me there. And it's exactly what I'm doing for my short content on Instagram and my long content on YouTube. Always the same technique. Another system I use for less theory and more practical lessons, which is my case since I build real businesses and document every single step in my courses. You might want to check them out. I film every step twice. First take out loud to feel the best way to teach this. Second take the final one straight to the point. It is more time consuming, but the end result of each lesson is much better. Straight to the point with no fluff. So once the script is ready, we can start filming. This one's a big one. I had no idea how to film video a few months ago, promise. I'm not like those guys who have been doing video for ages. Actually, I hated video, but we're now getting along pretty good. But this is proof that we can all learn how to make decent videos. Here's my take and video setup for low budget and middle budget. But before this, two strong beliefs. Audio is way more important than video. People stay through a bad video with good audio, but leave if audio is not good. Second belief, your message is way more important than your setup. So make sure you put your phone 
focus on crafting a great message. All right, so for a low budget, for video, you can use your phone camera. They're actually pretty good. For audio, you can buy a phone mic for $30 on Amazon. For lights, we can buy an affordable light, uh, again, on Amazon for around 30 bucks. With this, you're honestly more than good to go. If you want to invest some money on your setup, here's what I've done. For video, I bought a Sony CVE-10 for $800. For audio, I bought a Shure MV7 for $300. And for lights, I bought a Godox SL60 for $140. Pretty robust setup for less than $1,300. Also, some people use teleprompters to read everything from there. I don't like this because I feel my personality doesn't come through. So I personally use bullet points and deliver my message for that specific point. I film everything in one take. So the final lesson is 10 minutes. The whole recording is probably around 60 minutes with all my bloopers and everything. Because surprise, surprise, I don't speak as fluent as I look in my videos. I have to make some magic with the edit. Video editing is difficult at first, but as with anything, you get the hang of it. I use Premiere Pro to edit my videos and I pay around $22 every month for it. You can use Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, which is free. They are pretty similar conceptually. And here's the system I follow. So this is my whole chunk. This is called the A-roll. First thing I do is correct the color and the audio of the entire recording. Then I cut the fat, so the bloopers and the silences. Pros use keyboard shortcuts and it honestly makes it so much faster. Then I put other footage and images on top of the A-roll roll this is called the b-roll <laughs> makes sense and it is super useful to accompany the message like using images in powerpoint presentations finally i add some music and sound effects to the background and my lesson is ready to go this is like making bread right so i export the video and make sure to keep my folders organized otherwise our drive can get pretty messy and we are professionals great so i follow this process for every lesson and bring them to kajabi until my course is complete all right, so our course is finished, but no one gives a f Nah, I'm kidding. Here's my take to sell a course. We shouldn't spend weeks building something no one wants. You know, building an online course takes a lot of time. So make sure there's people actually interested in what you're doing. Here's what I've done. I've thought of four course ideas where I can bring value. I uploaded the four to my site, but people cannot buy them yet. They can join the waitlist. So now I start pushing my marketing and see if people are actually interested. So around 60 people joined the waitlist for my starting a software business course. So now I start filming this course. This way we have a better chance of success. This follows the principle of sell before you build, which I never completely understood, but now makes so much sense. Anyway, we want to keep our funnel simple. First, we want to get users in, then we want them to give us their email, and lastly, we want them to buy our course. Make sure to bring value in every step so our customer is happy and we are happy. And try as many channels as you can think of. Instagram, Meta, Google Ads, TikTok. Try them all properly and stick to those that bring you results. I use Google Analytics to see which channels are working best. I can put all of my focus onto these. Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments comments, I reply to all of them and also makes the algorithm think my videos are cooler. Selling courses online is actually pretty hard. I've shared my entire content strategy in this video you might want to check out. Thanks for spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one.